It's important for you to understand that life is not going backwards. Life is progressing forward. Now, your age will not make your life easy. Just because you're old, it doesn't mean that things will get better. It is principles that make life easy. Not age, not experience. To enjoy ease, to enjoy peace, you must learn certain things. Certain principles must be at your disposal. Nothing just works. It is men who cause things to work. You must learn the power of personal investment. You must invest more in your personality than in your bank account. Because it is your personality that will eventually determine what stays in your account. Who you are will determine what you earn. Money is not a pursuit. Money is a reward. Tuna hasu, tunatafta pesa, unachua shilingi ya Kenya. It doesn't work that way. Those who look for it don't have it. Because that is on the principle of getting it. Money is a reward to the problems you are solving and the person you are becoming. It is very interesting how when you deal with anger, your money increases. When you deal with that, your lying problem, your money increases. When you deal with your bitterness, your money increases. When you find a problem in the society and sort it out, your money increases. The better person you become, the more problems you are able to solve. Don't look at your bank account. That's what the problem is. Let's start with your attitude. Let's start with your lifestyle. Let's start with your mindset. Let's start with your company, the people you hang around. It is the enriched personality that enriches your bank account. So you can't break financial limits just by prayer only. You must enrich your personality. Finances ride on principles, not on needs. Change happens when the same thing happens to you and you react differently. We know you have changed by how you react to the same situation. So most of the time, God does not change circumstances. God changes your attitude. When you also change the way you look at things, the things you look at also change. So it all begins with you. Whatsoever a man soweth, the same shall he reap. You shall not reap where you sow, but you shall reap what you sow. One day God spoke to me. He said, any time, you solve a spiritual problem, you create a divine debt. God must pay you. Please, be good to others. Help where you can. Do good where you can. Don't wait for them to reciprocate. It doesn't come from where you give. But it will surely come back to you. Amen. Number two principle to break financial hardship is the law of preparation. What you do first will determine what God does next. You cannot sit down and wait for things to change. You must be up and about, moving towards something. Blessings don't come for those who wait for them. Blessings come for those who pursue them. God moves with those who are moving. God works with those who are working. You break financial hardship when you begin to take practical steps towards your financial destiny. God will grant speed but will not ignore steps. Where you are is a stepping stone to where you're going. Be faithful with the little you have. Do it as if it's the only thing that you're doing in life. And the small become big. The little become great. Law number three is the power of timing. If you want to break financial hardship, you must be sensitive to divine times and seasons. God works all the time, but works in your life at a particular time. Divine timing is the master key to prosperity. 
when you are in divine timing everything works for you in that season sometimes when things don't work the way you expect them to work check the timing most of the time it's not that we are doing wrong things most of the time is we are doing the right things in the wrong timing the time may be right for you but not right for god three things happen when you're the right timing number one there is divine backup number two there is divine supplies god becomes your jehovah jireh number three there is divine preservation you are preserved you must learn how to nurture divine relationships in every miracle there is a man part and there is a god part god will use men to meet men you must understand that your impact on earth is not determined by a god relationship only there is a god relationship and there is a man relationship you must know how to stay with people you must learn how to nurture relationships that god has brought your way because god will use relationships to reach to you you must understand the power of nurturing divine relationships men are divine assets for blessing men are the hands of god on earth god will meet you in a man the appearance of man is the appearance of god when you pray when you fast when you sow seed god appears to you in a man a man will appear for a season to change a man will appear for blessings to be released a man will appear for the distance between you and your blessing to be shortened a man will appear you don't know is around you men who god uses they don't look like it it may be a watchman it may be a fish seller it may be a guard at your place treat everyone right because you never know yes oh god you never know yes never forget second corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 never forget it. to wit that god was where in christ, in christ yes. doing what yes. god has to be in a man to meet you